the world's greatest podcast in America, John Reed, Cody McClure. Cody, how's Texas? Texas is all right, John. It's good to be here in Texas. Good to be anywhere here in our big, big wide world. Um, I got a little bit of sunshine shining down on me and it's kind of, it's kind of annoying me cause I got a little bit of a glare, but it, we're just going to have to deal with it. I guess I kind of look like an angel in a way, I guess you could say it's like a halo, <laughs> except it's piercing through the top of my head. Is that the sun or is that your light? Hmm. No, that's a good question. That could be my light. You know, that's a good point by you. I think that is the light. I didn't know if well, you had like a ceiling, a sunroof or something in there. No, but I just noticed the sun was shining because it was coming through the window and it was shining on my shirt. But I do think that particular light is the, the ceiling light. You're right. So anyway, well, there's a minute wasted. How are you doing today? Shitty. Very shitty. Very bad. Shitty. If you're watching on YouTube, you see that I have uh, recorded in a different place. I'm in my bedroom. But I, I get home to do the podcast. I call you. The work day was fine. Work day was okay. Mm -hmm. Busy, busy, stressful day. And then I get out. I call you. I say, hey, you want to do a podcast? Blah, blah, blah. You said, yeah. I said, okay, cool. I'm headed home. Give me till 6.05. And, buddy, I get home, and my dog, who has not been feeling well, has thrown up and shit all over the living room. All over the living room downstairs. Uh, it is gross. So I, um, my, uh, I gotta say, my my heart kind of stopped for a second there. I thought you were gonna say Frank had done passed on, and I was oh, gonna... I don't think I, would, I don't, I don't think I would podcast if that was the case. But who knows? <laughs> the show, the show must go on. Content must happen. But yeah. I do think if I walked in and found Frank was dead, that I, I don't think I would podcast immediately. At least I'd have to <laughs> okay. postpone a couple hours. Because I was really hoping that was not breaking news and I was going to have to react to that. I was going to be like, oh, fuck, something's wrong with Frank. What's the deal? What's the deal? What's the deal? Oh, something, something is wrong with him. <laughs> he has shit and puked his brains out today while I've been gone. So uh, coming home to that, mm. uh, it was not not great. So not how great. much how much shit and vomit are we so talking? Much. Multiple so places? Much. Yeah, so much. So much. I don't, understand how this is, I don't understand how it was all in his body. Really? Just like three, two pretty huge clumps of throw up, like yellow throw up. Right. A couple spots on the couch where he had thrown up on the couch. And then, you know, I'm sort of getting that cleaned up and I'm going behind the recliner to pick up my podcasting stuff. And I see that he's just diarrhea shit all over behind the recliner. Yeah. And he, he obviously doesn't feel well. So I can't even be upset with him. It's just kind of like a fuck, man. I'm sorry. Yeah. So I got a podcast with you, then I got to go pick him up some rice and some chicken to hopefully give him a little chicken and rice to hopefully get his set, stomach settled or something. But uh, I don't know. It's uh, not a great Monday. Not a great Monday. Well, the poor guy. And, and he doesn't know where to do it either. You know, that's the thing about an animal is they just, it happens and they, they can't control it. You know, they don't have brains like us. Man, they the kitchen would be so good, though, if you realize, like, hey, the the – the floor that is easily cleaned up is better than the carpet. Just like, don't do the carpet. But I get that carpet's the closest thing yeah. to grass. But like, it would be nice if he's just like, hey, this kitchen, you can easily wipe this up with paper towels and mopping and doing this. But it's never that. It's it's never there. It's always on the rug or or the carpets or, in this case, even the couch. So, uh, he never does it on the couch, which is how, obviously, uh, he, he he's very sick. Yeah, well, hopefully he gets to feeling better, you know. Are you going to take him to the vet or something? Or I don't know, man. Or just wait on it to to pass? I don't know. I imagine I got some leftover medicine, but I don't know. There's nothing really I think that they'll give him there. They'll just say, hey, make sure he's eating some rice to help settle his stomach. That's usually what happens when something like this happens. So, yeah, terrible, terrible Monday so far for your boy. It was it was good. Now it's very, very shitty and throw up -y. Okay. And to make matters worse, make matters worse, I got a goddamn softball game at 10 p.m. tonight. 10 p.m.? That's late for a softball game. Especially 10 p.m. Especially for a guy that does morning radio. I mean, geez. In a fucking... In a fucking public park, we got 10, 10 p.m. softball. How the hell does the city allow this to go on? 
I didn't know you were allowed in a public park, first of all, but especially at that hour. I mean, that's, well, maybe that's, it's not, you're right. Maybe it's not actually a public park. I think it's at an elementary school. Oh, okay. So, well, so you can't go at all. That's crazy. 10 o'clock PM. I mean, that's, you know, you got morning radio to do. So you're, I mean, you're going to go out and compete in an athletic event at 10. You're probably not going to be home till what? Midnight. No, I think there's an hour cap. So I should be home by 1125. I'd I'll imagine I'll be yeah. showered and, and like getting in bed by midnight. I just hope I can actually fall asleep. Well, yeah, you're going to have all that adrenaline ro- rushing from the from the athletic competition. Yeah, which, you know, I'm not expected to be like a star or anything at softball. It'll be nice to run out there and maybe catch a couple balls, pause, and, you know, maybe, maybe slap the bat around a little bit, maybe hit the ball a little bit. I, I don't know. I agreed to do this, and then – the first game's 10 o'clock. The rest of them won't be at 10 o'clock, but the first week is, and that kind of sucks. Yeah. Well, at least you get to look forward to tomorrow. You know, tomorrow's Tuesday, so that's always a nice day to have following a bad Monday evening. At least the next day's Tuesday. Yeah, the the, the best day of the week. Am I right? <laughs> Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't, not, not to just keep bitching, but I also didn't sleep very well last night. I slept maybe three hours last night. Yeah. And I've noticed, yeah. like, I don't really notice unless we're doing this podcast, but, like, my eyes, I'm getting bags there, and they're getting dark, and, like, I'm just very sleep-deprived, and I'm I'm looking pretty rough. You know, I, I used to think <laughs> I used to think I was an okay-looking guy. You know, never never handsome. I've never felt handsome, but, like, yeah. at least I was like, you know what? Certain angles, certain smiles. Okay, I got some stuff going on, but no, not anymore. I think I'm hideous these days. Yeah, well, you know, you're aging. I mean that, and that's part of it. You're rapidly, rapidly. I'm aging. <laughs> you're coming up rapidly. on 30, 35 years old. I mean, well, you're I'm ne- not coming up on it. I, 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 I'm not. I got three fourths of the year left. It's like I'm rapidly approaching thirty five. But hell, before I, before we know it, it'll be here. That is true. Well, there's things that you could probably do. You know, if you wanted to improve it, I mean, I know you're not looking to me for advice, but I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos on this carnivore diet. And I got to say, you know, there's a lot of people reporting how how much it affects you in positive ways. If you only eat steak, how do you how do you trust those people? Isn't well, well they're what on was YouTube. The, what was the liver king telling us to do? Because he turned out to be a phony. How do you trust these food influencers well i don't think it's fair to compare people doing the carnivore diet to the liver king that guy was clearly a nut so what i do just eat nothing but meat basically yeah yeah and it, can, I, can i eat eggs you can eat eggs yeah and if you want and you can modify it to your own preferences you can even eat uh cheese you can eat yogurt i mean now if you're doing strictly carnivore you're supposed to just eat meat and, and eggs and like you can have butter do you but, eat rice? No rice, just straight no, meat. No, no rice, no rice. That's a carb. Now, if you okay, do, as it no, if the main course, so just so like I could eat ten chicken tenders. Abs- well, they're fried and breaded. You mean? Okay, so it has to be like clean meat. You're supposed to eat just yeah, yeah. So I, I can eat so. grill. I can eat ten grilled chicken tenders. Now, if you're looking to just stay under fifty grams of net carbs a day, do more like a modified keto. The tenders actually don't have a ton of carbs. You might want to pull some of that breading off. You know, it's not the best thing for you with the seed oils and everything. But again, I'm nobody to be giving advice. I just watch these people on YouTube. No sauces? They do make keto-friendly sauces, like a, like sugar-free sauces. Yeah. See, uh, that's where you lose me. It's, it's too damn strict. You can have a barbecue sauce. There's one called uh, G something. I forget what it's called. It's a sugar-free barbecue sauce. And that's supposed to help with aging? I don't know. There's a lot of people well, that What would really to... fucking help is just for me to get some sleep at night. That's what would really help. This that, switch, yeah. to the morning is, this switch to the morning has ruined my life and my body and my <laughs> face and my yeah. mind. Yeah. You, you're saying I'm getting you're... dumber. I'm getting dumber as we talk. Hell, I catch myself. I I catch myself in the morning saying stuff that I know aren't words. <laughs> I, I know they aren't words. I, I know they're not. My my singular noun has a plural verb, and I know that's not the way grammar works. But like, it just happens, man. It just happens. Do you think you're? I, I, it's got to be lack of sleep. I mean that that's definitely the. 
if you look at yourself, what, a year ago versus yourself now, that's oh, I look like shit. I, I look like shit. I probably <laughs> I gained 10 pounds. I've gained 10 pounds and my eyes are dark and I got bags under them. I've never had bags under my eye before. I was, I used to be so, so rested. I used to sleep like, you know, eight to 10 hours a night. Hey, I go to sleep at two o'clock. Hey, it's fine. I'll wake up at 10 a.m. I don't have to do radio till noon. That's, that's not happening anymore. Last night I fell asleep. Probably if I was guessing the last time I peeked at the clock, it was about one thirty-seven, and I don't think I fell asleep for another 30 minutes or so. So, uh, then I remember looking at the clock this morning at about five fifteen. So, like you know, I I got maybe three hours and change last night. Well, for the record, I didn't mean to say when you look at yourself. I meant when you look at things that are different from a year ago versus now. But um, when you look at that, I'm doing a presidential term. You know, you know how they say the president's over four years. Like I, I, I'm two years of radio is going to be worse for me in the morning than than any four year presidential run of anybody. Well, do you consider, I mean, obviously you've, uh, you know, you, you've defined the problem as being lack of sleep. That's the big difference in you one year ago versus you now. So you've defined the problem, but in terms of finding a solution, do you find that you're maybe burning the candle at both ends that you're, cause you know, you got to be up early, but you're still staying up late and you're not compensating for the early rise. Part of the problem is I'm not I'm not sleepy. I'm just tired. I don't get that at all. What what, what do you mean? Like I, I feel low energy at night, but like I can't fall asleep. I'm not sleepy. Do you lay down at ten o'clock? Yeah, or? yeah, yeah. Plenty of yeah. Like when I'm on the couch, like it's not like I'm like, hey, it's time to go to bed. I'm sleepy. It's like my mind is still going, and when I get in bed, you know, if I take a shower before, I can usually fall asleep within thirty minutes or so. But that's still going to be 11 30 or midnight well i mean six hours is a pretty reasonable amount of sleep you know if you yeah, sleep last like... night was unique like last night was unique I, i'm sleeping more than three hours a night and i don't want to you know we can get to the funny stuff here soon hopefully but like it's just <laughs> i don't know if you saw that story that came about, out about that dutch woman but like i, I kind of yeah, i had that in my notes <laughs> i was kind of thinking you know oh, assisted shit, suicide you know, <laughs> you know well, a, a completely twenty-nine year, a completely healthy twenty-nine-year-old Dutch girl is, is in the news because she got one of those assisted suicide pods. I, I think we've talked about those, and I told you about those 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 things they have where that you can basically just peacefully opt out, and your family doesn't have to worry about cleaning anything up. And it, it seems, you know, on days like today, not the worst. She was cute not, too. Not the worst. She was cute. Goes to show, even being a sexy 29-year-old Dutch woman doesn't mean you're happy. Well, was she cute or was she sexy? I mean, I don't know. I didn't really see any, like, body shots, but it looked like she had a cute face. Well, yeah. I'm not saying she wasn't cute. I just don't know if I would have. The pictures I saw, I wouldn't have graduated her towards sexy. Oh, okay. Well, she, I didn't... she wasn't ugly. She wasn't ugly. She looked pretty in the picture. I just saw the New York Post, the front yeah. pictures. Yeah, well, looking pretty and sexy, not necessarily the same things either, in my opinion, but she was not ugly. We can agree on that. I do agree with that. Yeah, she was not ugly, and yet she still killed herself with the Dutch assisted suicide program. So while we're on that topic, I mean, how do you feel about that, the, uh, the assisted suicide? Do you think people should be able to do that? Yeah. Okay, well... Yeah, I mean, is that really a question? Like, you don't think you should be allowed to? I do think you're going to lose some people who otherwise would have toughed it out and maybe figured it out, and maybe they were at their lowest point, and they said, you know what, this is the easy alternative here. Fuck this, I'm out. Whereas maybe if you didn't have that program, like maybe they wouldn't have jumped off a bridge, you know? Yeah, they no, I mean, I, it's it's tricky because, I mean, I feel like when it was first kind of created – I think it was kind of pitched as like, hey, we are going to maybe let terminally ill people do these. And like, you don't have to go through chemo. You don't have to go through cancer. You can have a peaceful exit off of this, Bridge. off of this earth. And now it's just like, hey, a 29 year old girl that was pretty healthy just decided, hey, I don't want to live anymore. And maybe didn't have the time to go to counseling and like really think it through. And like, once you make that decision, obviously it's over i mean you know it's kind of simple we do this with everything though right like hey here's artificial intelligence you can create pr pictures of pretty puppies or you can you know 
Imagine what Mars looks like. Here's a waterfall on Mars. Isn't AI so powerful? And that quickly turned into Andy Reid fucking Taylor Swift from behind. <laughs> and, and we kind of see what that looks like as Chiefs Kingdom roots them on. So, like, you know, the, the best laid intentions. <laughs> the just, best laid. I picture the animated Andy Reid cock. <laughs> just fucking. <laughs> Uh, big it's cock. out there. You just, you just gotta look. But the best laid intentions, you know, they they don't always. We don't always follow through that with our products. You know, just look at guns. Hey, this is to protect your family. Whenever the military comes to try to get you, okay. Here's you know, fifty little kids getting shot at a school. That's not quite what we imagined, but yeah. you know, I, I do think. You know, maybe if I flushed it out more and actually talked to some families affected by it and everything, but like I do feel like if you don't want to live, you shouldn't have to live. Yeah, I feel like well, it's your life. I feel like it's your life, and you know, I don't like people jumping off bridges. I don't like people shooting themselves. You know, and, and loved ones having to find them or whatnot. I, I don't like traumatic suicides. I, I don't like suicide at all. I feel like we're gonna get taken off YouTube just for even talking about this. Like, I, I don't think it's the answer. I'm, I'm not saying that, but I also think if someone doesn't want to live anymore. That's probably the most humane way to do it. Okay. Well, I uh, feel like this is going down a dark path, and uh, but it does lead me into my next point as kind of a seamless transition here. If you don't mind, if I transition, is that a monster take? Um, Are people gonna be like, "What the fuck is wrong with John?" Because I am depressed right now. I, I mean, you seem a little uh, down today. Yeah, you seem a little. I can see it in your eyes. You're a little bit. Um, I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm beaten down. And, you know, but I don't think I'd be at the level if there was an assisted suicide pod thing here that I'd be like, hey, let's give that a spin. Like, I don't think I'm at that level. But people get yeah. beaten down, man. Life sucks. And I, I think people, I think some people just want to die. And it feels really hard to be like, hey, if you want to die, just die. But like, yeah. It, freedom it, and all that i i don't know i, I guess yeah. it's a little bit trickier than what i'm like letting it on to be but i definitely think if you're sick i definitely think if you're sick like if i had cancer just i'm not i'm not doing what happened what i watched my dad go through like i'm not i'm not doing that so like in that regard i'm 100 percent in favor of it like I, I think you should be allowed to do that for sure and in america the only alternative is like hey here's a gun shoot yourself in the head and like i think that's bad and in poor form but i would do it 100 uh, if i was sick i would try i would probably travel to the the dutch to, to the netherlands to do it if i was actually like pretty sick i knew a guy back home who who did that he was going through cancer and he was in his 40s he was only like 45 or something like that and he uh i won't say he's a family friend but a friend of a guy who i know who you know i knew who the guy was but he shot himself i mean that's how yeah, he chose I to yeah, I mean, uh, you know, uh, this is really dark, so we should really lighten it up. And I'll have to put a trigger warning at the beginning of the episode. <laughs> but uh... yeah, let's let's move into something a little bit lighter here. I, I want to talk about euthanasia, and if if you think that the some... euthanasia, what the, there's should... not a lot of euthanasia. They're not they're not having sex in Japan. I don't know if you've been <laughs> keeping up with that story for the last seven years, but there's not a lot of euthanasia these days. <laughs> Not a lot of girls, at least. They, uh, they're trying to get rid of them. Um, no, I want to talk about euthanizing homeless people. And if you think that maybe there's a path to that. I had a woman, and I'm joking, of course, you know, but I do see. You definitely didn't have a woman. Yes, we, we know. <laughs> Boy, you're on it today. For, for not having much sleep, you're on point. I'll give it, your, your brain's still firing here. Um, I had a homeless nut job. This is what this is leading into yesterday at the Exxon. I had a homeless nut job. This woman, listen, this woman had her head shaved. Okay. I was looking at the back of her head and she had cuts and, and, and sores and shit on the back of her head. Like she'd fallen and hit her head and like she was bleeding on the back of the head you could tell that she was drugged out to a point that I made eye contact with this woman and I'll explain why in a second. She had these blue piercing eyes and I swear, dude, they were moving at like rapid, like just like, yeah, like you're doing except faster. And I was like, this, this person might actually be a zombie. Like, like she looked like a white Walker and I'm like, 
I, we're getting to a point with some of these drugs. I don't know what these people are taking on the streets. Like, I don't know what all, what's in all this street meth or heroin or whatever it is. But my God, this woman was scary. And the reason I bring her up is because she threw a cup of ice at me at the Exxon station last night while I was getting gas. Okay, I'm, I'm pumping gas. And then I'm walking in to buy like a, you know, a Red Bull or a bottle of water or whatever I was doing. I think I was getting some more Zen. I was walking in the gas station and she she's walking the other way and she just turns and like fires a fucking cup of ice at me. And I'm like, you fuck it. And like the cup kind of bounced off my side, but like two ice cubes, one of them hit me in the head. One of them hit me in the shoulder. And I just said, you fucking nut job. Uh, and like, and she just took off walking, fucking smiling, doing like, and obviously she's just fucked out of her gourd. Right. Excuse and so, me. And so I go in this gas station and you know what I did? I got my own cup of ice and I filled it with Dr. Pepper. I filled that motherfucker with Dr. Pepper. And as I was driving out of that gas station, you know what I did? I fucking tossed it at that bitch right in the fucking chest. I said, here's some more ice for you, you fucking nut. This woman, I'm telling you, was crazed. Absolutely crazy. But I wasn't look I wasn't gonna let her get over on me. I wasn't gonna let that happen. I said, You want some more ice, you fucking bitch? And I just threw it out the fucking window. I mean, it hurt. She hit me in the head with an ice cube like it I mean she fired that fucking thing at me. So you, I got did her she, sticky. Did she squeal when you hit her? Did she make any noise? Did she say ah? Yeah, something like that. It was something like that. It brought me, I can't tell you how much joy it brought me, though. Just, oh, I can imagine. Just uh, to I've get got a back. lot of joy just picturing it, yeah. Just revenge. to get it back. Revenge is real. Well, they say an eye for an eye, you know, this was, uh, but I went a step further because I put liquid in there. I said, fuck you, bitch. That way the ice didn't just bounce off her head. But she, I got a look at her, dude, and she was like <laughs> unbelievably crazy looking. And and it made me think about that. It made me think, like, at what point does someone... And I know it's sad that people become homeless drug addicts and they don't have any family left and all that. But at what point do we just put these people down, you know? Like, they're ruining cities. They are ruining cities. They are overrunning cities. Austin's bad when it comes to that. I mean, it, it's bad, dude. I, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's a dark idea, but... Uh, is it is, it is it all do we do we have to uh, never mind i was gonna say do we have to do something with mental health but i don't want to talk about no. it <laughs> that's just no. I, I, this, the idea of you drilling this woman with dr pepper there's people <laughs> that you, are beyond did you go health. yeah i got her because that's what i picture you doing saying yeah i got her no i rolled the passenger window down i said hey you want some more fucking ice that's what i said <laughs> i said here's some more Man. fucking ice how, how bad would it have been had you missed and just got it all over your car. You throwing out the passenger side seems seems really uh, poorly designed. That, that seems like bad planning on your end. Credit to you for letting the shot, but I would be too scared to throw it out of the passenger side. I did have to make sure I was. It was planned. I mean, it was strategic after after what she did. But you know, it, the, the point is, you can't let people get over on you. And so I had another story I was going to lead into that. Another thing happened. My dealings with the public have not been good the last few days since we last just podcasted. Makes me, whenever I was a kid, I know I've told you the story, but maybe somebody in the audience hasn't heard it. But I used to have, uh, I had an uncle who would always just want to litter out, out my side of the, of the truck when we'd be riding through the country. And he just loved throwing my window down, throwing it out my window. And one time I... I smacked his cup of Coke back in his face. Like, get that shit out of here. And it just went all over him and all over the, the steering wheel and everything. And oh, he, I bet he, he was lost hot. it. He lost his mind. He was so mad. And I was like, well, I'm tired of you throwing out my window. So I just smacked it back. Did he beat you? Uh, no, he didn't beat me, but he, he, he was scary when he was mad. Uh, yeah, I bet he was hot. If you got him with all that, you got soda all over him. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, the joke was on me though because I had to clean it up. It was a hot, it was a hot summer day, and the bees and stickiness didn't mix, but uh, it was worth it. I still laugh about that thinking about it. Yeah, yeah. Well, awkward transition. Well, the main thing I was going to tell you, actually, my main topic of the day was somebody else 
that tried to get over on me and I didn't let it happen either. That's my theme of today's podcast. Don't let people get over on you. I had stand up for yourself. This was Friday right after we did the podcast or, or I guess, or did we do it? I can't remember. But anyway, I went to, I went to restaurant, right? I went down the road and I didn't go to my typical Henry's. I went to a different place just trying to get coffee. And I wanted to get a little breakfast, you know, it's like 1 PM, 2 PM. And I thought, well, it's about time for breakfast. So I go in this coffee shop down the road and I go in there and I said, I just want an iced coffee. And, you know, I'll preface by saying this was one of those hipster type places where they overcharge for things. And I understand that to a point, you know, I like hipster coffee. So I deal with some of their bullshit. This was excessive. They had on the menu something called a Big Sammy. That was the name of this sandwich, okay? The Big Sammy. I thought, all right, I'll get a Big Sammy. $9 for the Big Sammy. Okay. I order it. The guy priced. Yeah, for a Big Sammy. Yeah, you'd think so. I order it. The guy gets my coffee. He brings me my sandwich. I walk out and get in the car. And when I get in the car, I open the sandwich up. And I thought... Okay, well, I've been shorted half of the Big Sammy because it was cut in half. So we're talking about a piece of sandwich that's like like that, okay? And I said, well, maybe they call that the Little Sammy, but that's clearly not a Big Sammy. So I go back in the coffee shop. I said, hey, man, I just I was wondering, and I opened up my box. I said, this only had half the sandwich in there. I was wondering about the other half of the sandwich. The guy tells me there's not a second half of the sandwich. The big Sammy wasn't that big, huh? He said the big Sammy was was that, was what I got. And I said, you mean to tell me this is a $9 sandwich? This is half a sandwich. And he started in on all this shit about how it's, uh, well, our sourdough is made locally and all of the ingredients that we use are local, organic ingredients. I said, yeah, 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 okay. And, and I'll pay that premium, okay? I understand that. But you gave me half a sandwich. He said, no, that's the Big Sammy. And I took and you, a, had the, you had the unmitigated gall to call it the Big Sammy. And I took a picture of it. I'm going to pause here for a second so that I can send you this. Can you still hear me? Yeah, I can still hear you. Okay, I'm going to send you this because I took a picture of it to see what you thought and to see if you think it's reasonably priced and to see what maybe what you would have done in this situation because I'm going to tell you what I did. Now, was this in Austin or was this in the outskirts of Austin? <laughs> no, this is in small town <clears throat> Lockhart, Texas. You oh, should... boy. <clears throat> you see what I'm dealing with right there? Oh, boy. $9 for that. Okay. Oh, boy. It, it is. It is. Honestly, honestly, it's a fourth of a sandwich is what it looks like. I, I'm picturing it basically as being the upper corner. It's a little bit bigger than that, but like it's no bigger then the little loop of the of the bread, like the little the little, maybe a third of a sandwich, is basically what this is, and and it's a good piece of sourdough. Okay, now now let me say it, it was good. The three bites I got out of it, it was a good sandwich. Okay, but that right there, if you charged me six dollars for that, I would think, boy, I kind of got fucked on this, but I would eat it and just never go back. But I, think if you charge me, six, I think if you charge $6 there, you could theoretically say, you know what? If I got two halves of that for $12, I can live with that. It's not an $18 sandwich by any means, but but two halves of that could be a $12 sandwich in this economy near Austin, Texas. That, well, that I might say, <laughs> okay. Okay, well, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying, basically. For $6, I would still feel like I got shorted, but I'd, sure. be, I'd be like, okay, whatever. And I would just never go back there. But for $9, I just looked at the guy and I was like, you're telling me that's a $9 sandwich. That's the whole sandwich. I said, I said, you see, it's just, it's cut in half. Like, where's the other half of the sandwich? And he said, no, that's it. That's the big Sammy. And I didn't throw a fit. I just said, okay. I said, okay. So this morning I called the place and you know what I did? I ordered a big Sammy. And I never went and picked it up just because it gave me joy knowing that in some way or another, the restaurant will have to eat that. 
And, you know, maybe the employee who makes it, maybe he'll just eat it or whatever, but at least they're having to use their ingredients and they're not receiving any cash for it. It just, could that, you, that, it's the only way I can figure out how to, you know. Could could you not have, like, at least ordered, like, five things to really put a dent in them? Like, you order, you only ordered one quarter of a sandwich that, that yeah, that, that worker probably just got to eat it and they probably get a free lunch on their shift. So, like... I appreciate the move. I like this new, this new petty side of Cody, who is, you know, taking too much shit for too long. If if you've listened to all thirty seven episodes of this podcast, you know, Cody is a stand up guy. Life is sometimes, <laughs> you know, taking advantage of him, and and he's now finally had enough, and he's going to start trying to get even. He's going to try to even the score. I feel like you should have at least ordered like. 40 or $50 worth of goods to, to maybe really try to stick it to them. Maybe but so. I digress. But the logic in my mind was that I should have gotten another half a sandwich. And so I thought, well, that that'll be my other half of the sandwich. I won't actually get to eat it, but at least what I paid for won't go to just that one little square. I received like at least in some way, no matter what happens to that sandwich, it'll, it'll, the restaurant in some way will have to eat it. An eye for an eye. I mean, I was just appalled, just absolutely appalled at that. And, and so you, and, you took it and you didn't ask for a refund. You 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 got your sandwich. You had your nine dollar sandwich. Yeah, and the guy just the nerve to try to tell me about the locally sourced ingredients and all that shit. Like that that's fine and dandy, you know. I know you're a local business or whatever, but nine dollars is more than excessive for that. I wouldn't expect to get fucked that hard in Beverly Hills. Okay. Or downtown Austin. So and, what ingredients and we're, were on this sandwich? Texas. What ingredients ham, were on this sandwich? Ham, honey ham. And Do they go kill the pig themselves? <laughs> Apparently. Why do I give a fuck if a pig is locally sourced? They're disgusting animals. And like a locally sourced pig honestly seems like a bad thing because at that point it just seems like a pet. I feel like I'm taking someone's pet if it's locally sourced. I don't yeah. want my pets to be uh, – I don't, I don't want my pigs to be pets. I want them to be just big hogs in a slaughterhouse. Okay, but we got honey baked ham. What else we got? R.I.P. R. Garth the lamb. Um, well, that, that wasn't a pig. Uh, a pig no, I, and a, know, but, a lamb are two different animals, but either way. I know, but it felt like it was close to your – anyway. Uh, so honey ham, egg, and cheese. No one, no one ate Garth except the wild dogs that got him. That was the only. That was the only people that ate Garth. And they weren't this, people, but you get what I'm saying. This was a ham, egg, and cheese sandwich with like a local, <laughs> uh, a local so cheddar cheese. Like, not even like, not even like burger. Not like grass-fed meat. Like uh, this is just ham, local cheese. Like is is a, somebody is there Amish country out there where I they're churning it I, themselves? Like a local cheddar farm. I don't know, and it had an egg. <laughs> And it had a chipotle chipotle mayo on it, and it's supposed to come with arugula, which is always a joke in my head. But it literally was going to come with arugula, and I said, "Hold the arugula, I'm good on the greens." But nine dollars, I just uh, you know, I, I don't mean to harp on it, but I just I couldn't get past it. it. It almost ruined my Friday. Oh yeah, I forgot they do give you two two bites of cantaloupe right up next to the rind. So that's I think good. I would be more angry if they threw those fucking pieces of cantaloupe in my nine dollar <laughs> sandwich box. I think I think I would be like, take that shit out. Yeah. So if you're watching on YouTube, here's the picture of Cody's sandwich, his nine dollar sandwich. Like I said, I would pay six dollars for that and feel like I got fucked. But to pay nine dollars for it, I'm like, I asked him like three times. I said, "Where's the other half?" I said, I said, this is the $9 sandwich. This right here, this half is the $9 sandwich? He said, yes. And he, and he now, explained there, all this. Is there any oh. part of you that felt like you couldn't raise a real fuss about it because of your weight and your size? Like you had to kind of keep some type of restraint? I'm. Fu it's funny you bring that up because there were other people there in the coffee shop. And you know these places tend to be kind of quiet inside. So, yeah, I couldn't. You're right. I, I couldn't raise much of a fuss or everybody would be like, oh, look. Fatty didn't get enough of a sandwich to he's not satisfied. You know, I, I wasn't Sometimes, expecting a so foot long. You, you should have walked around to every single person and asked them. You should have raised hell. I should have walked up to everyone. And said, Does this look like a nine dollar sandwich to you? I mean, like, I think you handled it pretty well, but also we're a little bit of a pussy because I think you could have just been like, 
don't eat here. This is a $9 sandwich. And held it up to the room and went on an impassioned speech of, they charge $9 for this, for this right here, and just taking a survey. And I, I think, you know, I, I don't really feel great about the idea of one-star Google reviews, but, hell, someone gave you a two-star for a ride. So, like, you could at least go get your revenge and, and leave a one-star review while saying, like, hey, they charge $9 for a third of a sandwich. Well, it almost ruined my Friday. Like, I thought about it for hours. And I did. I got close to, I said, you know, am I really going to make a Yelp account just to just so that I can one-star this place? Because well, you, have, the place- you have a Gmail. You could do the Google review pretty easily. Well, I don't know. I always just look at the thing on Apple where you type in the Apple Maps, the restaurant, and uh, you can scroll on the, and those come from Yelp. Yeah. But, yeah, I usually just Google it instead. Yeah, and the place has all good reviews too. It's a it's a good, re- well reviewed place. And I was like, how well, is no one else? You need to tell the other side of the story. You need to tell the other side yeah. of the story here. Yeah, I'd be. Uh, yeah, yeah. That that's why I don't go to places like that, man. You ask me why I eat the same places everywhere I go. You ask me why I'm so picky when I go places. It's because of shit like that. Because that yeah. would ruin my day. That would ruin my whole weekend. And I, yeah. I'm mad just looking at it. And I like to carefully vet my places. Even in town, I, I carefully vet my places because things like bad food or things like food not being up to my standard or prices being outrageous, it, it fucks with me. It makes me so angry. Yeah, because you just know they're, they're fucking you. It's just it's unfair that they would do that. And, um, well, you know, you saw the, you saw the stories where like Target and Walgreens and Walmart are all coming out and being like, Hey guys, our bad, we've been fucking you on these prices. We're going to actually lower them again so that maybe you'll come back to our stores, which is them just admitting like for the last three years, they've been absolutely fucking you. That's where we're at in this country. You're there's fuckery happen happening on a daily basis and you got to decide Am I getting fucked today or am I doing the fucking? Because the fucking is going on all at the same time. It, it's coming for you or, or you got to put it back. You got to. It's, it's you, coming for you or coming on you. You, you got to <laughs> decide which is which. Are you the hammer or are you the nail? That's, are yeah. you the fucked or you are the fucky? Like what? Or fucker. You got to decide which one it is. And, you know, I really wish you just would have gotten some Dr. Pepper and just threw it in that guy's face before you left. I really just <laughs> wish you would have gotten a $5 Dr. Pepper and at least threw it in his face on the way out and said, well, there was a $5 Dr. Pepper, you son of a bitch. Yeah. Now, you know how, you know what a good person would have done? Here, here, I could have changed my karma. I, I could have done better in the world. What I could have done is went and got that sandwich that I paid for today and taken it to that homeless woman I threw the Dr. Pepper at and said, here, and then showed her kindness, even though she threw ice at me. That's how you make the world a better place, but I have no interest in that. I disagree. I don't think that's how you make the world a better place. I think you make the world a better place through negative and positive reinforcement. You act like an asshole. Somebody should treat you like an asshole. That way maybe you quit acting like an asshole. We let people get away with being mean to people for too long to where they think it's okay to run over people. I vehemently disagree with that spare the rod spoil the child type shit we we need to get back to beating people's ass both as parents now i'm not saying to go full adrian peterson but i used to get my legs whipped i used to get my legs whipped real good with the hickory and you know i haven't beaten anybody's ass you know in in a super violent just unhinged way but i believe in what's right and what's wrong so what you're saying is beat the child with a rod is what you're saying i'm saying uh spanking some ass and 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 hitting Hitting some legs with hickory, you know, uh, you know, at least I don't like it you I haven't it killed like anybody. That. I don't like it when you say spanking some ass. I don't like it when you say it like that. That sounds wrong. Either way. Either way. This has been a vulgar podcast. The language has been just through the roof. This is rated yeah, R. You might have to put a, uh, a disclaimer on or uh, whatever, whatever that is you put at the front. Yeah. That, uh, yeah. A lot of uh, language was used. A lot of F word here. Yeah. But don't don't listen with your kids. Right. Unless they're cool. Like yeah. I would have been able to listen to this as a 12 year old. Yeah, me too. My dad, my dad bought me the chronic 2001 when I was nine. And I got to listen to Dr. Dre at my nine year old birthday party. So I, I would have been fine. Or I guess my 10 year old birthday party. I would have been cool enough to do this. I was watching rated R movies, but. 
some of your kids aren't cool enough. I was. So if you want your kids to be like me, let them listen to this podcast. If you want your kids to grow up to have bags under their eyes, <laughs> run on if three hours of sleep. If, if you want your kids to look like they've been on a, a, a 48 hour meth bender because they can't and they look like they can't sleep, let them listen to curse words. It'll be just fine. A few more hours awake and you're going to be throwing cups of ice at people at gas stations. You do kind of look like that woman because she had a shaved head or she kind of looked like you, I guess. You barely even call her a woman. I don't know. She was closer to a, a creature than she was a woman. But anyway, please remember to like, subscribe, come on my face. And uh, moving on to the next story. D- did you have something else you wanted to say there? Or you want to move along? No, buy the, buy, buy the shirt. Buy the shirt. One of the two shirts. If if we sell five more shirts between now and next Monday, I will drop a new shirt with a discount code and we'll – this one, uh, there'll be two options. I have a special one that maybe comes with uh, some more context, or I'll have a handwritten one where Cody has drawn the logo of the podcast, and it's uh, an artist sketch of the podcast, and I will put that on a shirt. And people have said that will be our best seller. So we need five people to step up and buy the damn shirt. I do like the idea of putting the sketch shirt out. I, I, that's uh I like that sketch I did. I think people I'm gonna will like put that. A, uh, I'm going to put a special promo code in the uh, the description where you can maybe get 15% off. Sounds good. Well, Eric Clapton recently said that Israel... Uh, he sucks. I don't care. Well, let's move on. I, I, I do not care at all what Eric Clapton says. And then you said Israel, too. Like, ah, I'm good. I don't, I don't care. You're not getting me canceled. I already, <laughs> I already was team suicide earlier, so let's move on. I don't give a fuck what Eric Clapton said. You don't want to know? Nope. Zero interest. Okay. Could well, not care less. You think the audience might want to know? They can Google it. Eric Clapton, Israel. I'm sure it's, <laughs> okay. I'm sure it's a jaw-dropping analysis. I'm good. Okay, well, we'll move on. Let's talk about if you, you don't see those two about... big old boobies. Did you see those two big old boobies at the hockey game? Yeah, I'm an Oilers fan now. I like hockey now. I've always been Tits. a fan of Edmonton. Those were Hell nice. Yeah. That was a nice set of breasts there that woman had, What wasn't it? Hell yeah, good for her. Yeah. I'm glad she's showing them, too. I'm glad she she feels you know, em- it, empowered. It, it would kind of be a smack in the face of God to not show those. <clears throat> yeah, uh, honestly. I mean, they were uh, pretty much perfect, you might say. Um, well, since you don't want to talk about Israel, let's move on to uh, racism. Do you believe that Caitlin Clark is suffering from racism? In the oh, yeah, car- no, this is this is getting borderline hate crime level in today's WNBA. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm uncomfortable with the level of hate she's getting. And I'm more so uncomfortable that none of her teammates have her back. Is it because they're jealous of her? I think it is. Yeah, 100 percent. Like I, I, 100 percent. It is. I 100 percent think it's racially driven, or at least race is playing a factor into it. Now, you know, you could also say that it's maybe driven by her level of popularity, and how much attention she gets, and how much endorsement money she gets, and all that. But it it feels really icky, man. I don't like it. I like Caitlin Clark. I'm trying to watch the WNBA, but like, I, I'm fine with physical play. If you want to do cheap shots, if you if you don't like a rookie, you're trying to have some welcome to the league moments, that's fine. But I'm not okay with none of her teammates having her back. Somebody on her team has to, like, come and lay a hard foul on, on somebody else. Like, basketball has enforcers. Michael Jordan didn't get fouled hard by the Pistons because he was black, but he had teammates that would have his back that would then whip their ass. Like, Charles Oakley made a career out of just being an enforcer. Yeah. Somebody on her team has to, like, throw an elbow on somebody. They're, they're, they're second most popular player or whatever is, for lack of a better description, she's supposed to kind of be Shaq. I mean, she's a big old girl, the big old South Carolina girl, I think, Aaliyah Boston. She's a big old girl. Like, she should be able to, like, lay somebody out in the paint. Instead, she's, like, smiling and almost laughing about it. And, like, at a certain point, somebody's got to step up. Her own and, teammate was smiling about it? Yeah, it's kind of like, well, it's more like kind of like a laughing smile. Like, what the hell are they doing? Like, you know, kind of the awkward smile. It wasn't like she was laughing at them hurting her, but it was just kind of like, whoa, this is crazy. Why is nobody stopping it? Or, whoa, this is what we're doing type of vibe. But, like, lay somebody out. 
I feel very strongly about this, actually. But, like, I, I don't like what aboutism when it comes to stuff like this. But I couldn't help but think, like, what if this was a predominantly white sport? Let's just say hockey. And there's a really popular black rookie. And all the white hockey players are just whipping, their, whip, whipping the black person's ass and no one has his back. Whipping? Beating. Hmm. What if well, they were, you know, putting them into the boards and just fighting them at all times? And you know, making it making an example that out probably, of them. That probably does happen in hockey. Honestly, it's just nobody watches, so they haven't had a trend transcendent athlete like Caitlin Clark. No, I def- I don't think it does happen in hockey because I think hockey has enforcers, and I think that somebody would step up and whip somebody's ass over it. But like, it just feels crazy, and like, I couldn't help but <laughs> think about it if it was not to go full Clay Travis or whatever. But like. If it was a black athlete that was getting treated like this when no, and nobody would step up and have their back in a predominantly white sport, I think we'd have a different conversation. And it well, feels racially motivated with Caitlin. It really does. I did see someone say, you know, if, if you start fining these women $50 every time that happens, that this will go away. And I, th- I do think that's a good point, you know. Well, Angel Reese did get fined $1,000 for uh, skipping the postgame presser and, like, it was sad that that thousand dollars is a big deal off of her salary. When you just well, look at the actual like WNBA game checks, I'm sure she's got some endorsement money to help cover it. But like, yeah, like if you if you did start throwing fines out, maybe it would stop. But like, it's crazy what the WNBA has done. Anyways, like look up the standings in the WNBA. Well, you I know you can't because you don't have a phone right now because you're recording. But like through last night, Caitlin Clark's team had played eleven games. And the defending champion, Las Vegas Spurs, had played six games. They are making Caitlin play all these back-to-backs and, like, basically play every other day when she's not on a back-to-back. And they're milking her dry. And, like, she's getting her ass beat. And it just seems kind of messed up. It seems so short-sighted from the WNBA. I'm not saying they have to coddle her. I'm not saying they have to do that. But because we're going to like the redemption story. Like, go, I, I said it before the season started on the morning show every day from 7 to 10 a.m. on Fox Sports Knoxville. But I said, like, Nike is going to give us a sick, a really sick commercial at the end of the season that's going to have highlights of Caitlin Clark getting her ass beat. And it's going to talk about her getting bigger, better, faster, and stronger for her second year. And, like, we'll buy into the hype machine because that's what usually happens in basketball. It's okay. But, like, right now it feels bad. It feels very short-sighted that – Nobody on Indiana has has her back. I hope this doesn't result in Caitlin Clark becoming the Johnny Manziel of the WNBA. You'd hate to see that happen. No, but there's probably a part of her that's like, fuck these people. I'm making this league so much money, like, and this these is the way they're people? treating me. These people? Yeah. Whoa, now. Yeah. Whoa, yeah. Nelly. These, uh, these haters. As Keith Jackson no, used no, to not, say. Whoa, not, Nelly. No, 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 not that. Yeah. That's I, not what I meant. Right. Like you didn't mean whipping literally earlier. No, uh, I, I meant her teammates right, that I, aren't defending her. Yeah, I got where you were coming from. I, like I, Caitlin Clark's getting them private jets. They're getting to ride chartered planes and like get all this access and attention and none of them are going to have her back. Well, she's not the reason that everybody's watching, according to Angel Reese. She's not the reason everybody's watching is not just because of one person. It's because of me, too, Angel said. You know what? I, I don't necessarily disagree with that. I think Angel Reese in that game against LSU two years ago did put women's basketball on the map. And I think the rematch this year put Angel Re- you, know, you know, was a big deal. I won't say put anybody on the map because they were already there. But, no, I, I agree with, with Angel well, Reese Angel, there. Angel says she's taking on the villain role, and she's comfortable well, doing funny. that. Not to not to really steer into a full women's basketball podcast, but I have been keeping up with it. But I will say, like, it's really crazy, and it was brilliant by Angel Reese. But like, go back and see the way that she acted after Caitlin and Iowa beat her ass in the Elite Eight game. Angel Reese tried to be so like nice and and humble and talk about how they're friends and basically talk about how much how much of a toll it's taken on her that everyone hates her and that she doesn't want to be the villain and blah, blah, blah. And it was 100% so that she didn't get slandered. She tried to, like, be a victim and make people feel sorry for her so that people didn't make fun of her for getting her ass beat by Caitlin Clark. And it worked. And now she's in the WNBA, and she's right back to being mean to Caitlin Clark. And it was, it was brilliant maneuvering by her. Well, also, on the Angel Reese comments, I mean, I would just point out that nobody's tuning in for an Angel Reese game. 
unless Caitlin Clark's playing too. Like she can be the the villain to Caitlin Clark and she wants to take on that role, but I don't think anybody's flipping on the TV because Angel Reese is playing. You know what I mean? That, no, that, that that's maybe fair, but like I will say that this the women's basketball boom from two years ago with that game and then the following year, it did make me watch more. And then like, you know, I've been paying attention to young Cameron Diaz out in LA with the Sparks, Cameron Brink. I've been <laughs> yeah. paying attention to her games, oh, yeah. like her and Rakia Jackson, Lady Vol. I actually watch their games. You know, I'm gambling on them. I'm not just watching for the love of the game, but I've been gambling on some WNBA games. And I will say that, you know, at least it's got me into Cameron Brink, who is, again, young Cameron Diaz and very, very, very cute for a young girl. Like, she's only like 21 or so, but still. Right. I'm a fan. Old enough, he says. Old enough. I won't tell you what my other uncle or what my uncle used to say. Uh, no, I, the, I, I got an idea. <laughs> I, I think I've heard that uh, phrase before. I, what? What? Uh, what? The one I smacked the cup back in his face. What he used to say. <laughs> I won't get him canceled, but. <laughs> well, Gen Z. Just well, sticking with Gen Z here. Apparently, Gen Z is boycotting nine to five jobs for quote mental energy. Um, uh, the story I read focuses on a, a woman who was career focused in the corporate world turned barista. And she said she's done with career focus and she wants to now focus on life instead of career. Uh, this is a very European attitude. And I'm wondering if, if you're tending to agree with this as I, as you run on three hours of sleep, should you maybe focus more on your mental energy instead of, you know, uh, career focus like, can you do both is there a balance i don't make enough money to, to be as tired as i am right now like you know <laughs> like it, it, if i was making money and chasing this corporate dream then like yeah you kind of suck some things up on the on the promise of early retirement but like you know i'm not doing this to get rich i'm not doing this to get rich but i, I applaud gen z for just being like, nah, we're good. I mean, you live a Gen Z lifestyle. Yeah, I've always kind of valued my freedom over the typical nine to five. Now, I'll say, as as I'll get a little advice to the Gen Zers out there, I will say it hasn't really gotten me ahead at the age of thirty one. Uh, I'm living in a shipping container, so you know, be mindful please, of that. Please go buy the shirts. Please buy five <laughs> shirts. We we need money. <laughs> patreon.com slash freeze ranch please yeah. make this worth my while because goddamn man you know I, I got up 13 hours ago i did three hours of radio i'm cutting up videos i'm doing all this stuff and now it's like i go play softball at 10 p.m this is going to be a this is going to be a damn now 16 hour day at least now do you think a man who hears no, this who longer who, than that right 16 hours would be seven yeah 16 hour day Mm. Now, now let me ask you this, because I, I can sympathize with you, because I know it's mentally tasking to try to do all this. But do you think a guy oh. listening right now, maybe who works with his hands, you know, who maybe changes oil all day, maybe maybe bales hay for a living, is like, hey, quit being such a pussy? You think maybe he could be thinking that? Maybe, but I, I hope they know that I have also worked with my hands. I used to live the farm life, and. I, I, I'm more tired doing this than I was just working for 12 hours out in the heat. It is a different kind of tired. I stand by that, you know, I, and you know, I'm not saying that that's easy. Everyone's jobs are hard. I, I understand that. Typically though, the people that are working that hard are, are building towards like a career. We're kind of just, you know, trying to keep some people entertained. We're not going to get rich off this, you know, I used to feel uh. me mentally exhausted when I used to write for a living. Yeah, you know, no, I mean, it, it's different. You're stressed. I mean, again, I understand everyone's got stress. I, I'm just kind of joking around. It, it's just a bit, but please buy the shirt for the love of God. Um, but no, I mean, everyone, everyone's got their own shit. I get that for sure. Sure. Everybody's got their own shit they're dealing with. Like Mike it's Tyson, true. who is dealing with a medical that's issue. Why, that's why I think if you want to get in that damn pod, you should be allowed to. Because none, none the... of us has to be born. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't really like the way you're talking on this episode. No. You, you're sounding no. a little bit, uh, you know, 
Like maybe maybe you need to get into some sort of therapy or, or none some of us, sort of. Uh, n- none of us asked for all these responsibilities to be thrown up on us. Upon, that's, see, that's what I'm talking about. That, that, if I wasn't tired, I would say upon <laughs> us, but I am tired, so I say up on us. Thrown up on us. Yeah. yeah, which I mean, it is, it's kind of what it's kind of the same thing. It just sounds different. I used to tell my mom that when I was a teenager, I used to say, hey, quit telling me to mow the yard. I didn't ask <laughs> to come into this world. I wish I'd never been born. And that used to make her cry. And I wouldn't have to mow the yard as a result. So it does work nice. when you say that. Nice. But uh, anyways, Mike Tyson, what about him? Well, the Tyson Paul, uh, people probably already know this, but I the Tyson Paul fight has been delayed cuz Iron yeah, Mike Tyson's, he's sick, right? He's got health issues. Yeah, he got some kind of health issue which after seeing those videos of him training, I was really kind of looking forward to this to see if Mike could actually still go and and now I look at it like, "Ah, he's he's a little bit of an old man and he's probably going to get his ass beat." And I don't want to see that. I don't want to see Mike Tyson get beat up. I mean, I kind of understand. I'll still watch when he fights. I don't anticipate him to actually be trying to win the fight. I just don't see the Paul brother being willing to get punched in the face by Mike Tyson. But is he the only is, is Mike Tyson the only convicted rapist that we as a society still wrap our arms around and uh, accept for who he is? He never really got canceled, did he? No, he got he got canceled a little bit. He got canceled a little bit, but he, he obviously had a resurgence. But, like, you know, I, I don't know if it was just the hangover that did it for him, but, like, the hangover put him back into, like, lovable status. But I, I think we give fighters – I think we give fighters different rules because we kind of – it's kind of a trade off. Like, if we're going to – if we're going to, like, support you beating the shit out of people and getting your head hit, so we, I think we kind of allow people to be – violent in nature because of it i think it's almost a trade-off like our football players will overlook some you know really shitty things our football players do because they entertain us with their bodies and physically you know yeah unless putting themselves on the line unless there's video of it and then roger goodell has no other choice sorry sure. Ray rice sure well no he had video of it but if, once the video became public that's when it became different right then you can't but I mean, really excuse you, it. you know not not a convicted rapist, but like Kobe, Derrick Rose, Big Ben, Big Ben, Brett Favre, whatever you think happened with Stormy Daniels. So yeah, we we do give some people uh, some benefit of the doubt there, but Tyson might be the only one that's actually been convicted. Whatever happened with Big Ben? He Still got ticking. off. <laughs> still ticking that, that's good that's good yeah well i had a few other topics for the podcast but we're coming up on an hour here and i don't know you you're probably tired of no i gotta go get some fucking rice to go feed my dog to hopefully uh keep him from shitting and throwing up all over the uh the floor downstairs then i gotta go sign up tomorrow to rent a, a vacuum or a, a deep cleaner a carpet cleaner to hopefully get all that out so you rent those? That's what I got on the docket. Then I gotta go buy some fucking cleats. I gotta have some cleats to play softball in tonight. So I gotta go go buy me some cleats. I never thought I was gonna have to do that again after after you know turning seventeen, but here I am. I don't think you have to rent a deep cleaner. You can probably just spray some of that foam stuff nah, on it and scrub it out. It's, it's bad. No, nah, it's bad. And it needs to be deep cleaned. Yeah. Well you just it's bad. I mean you just rent the place though, don't you? Well yeah, but I don't want to live in filth either. Well, sure, sure, but I, I don't know. It My kids down there. I mean, I, I wanted to be clean. Uh, it's fine. Okay. I'll spend a couple hundred dollars. I wanted to be clean. I don't. Uh, I don't. I don't want to look at it. I don't want to smell it. I want it to be clean. I'm not like a neat freak by any means, but like smells do kind of mess up with me. You don't want to like living area. You don't want to live in dog vomit. That's understandable. Yeah, like I, I, I like my place to smell somewhat good. Like I guess I'm not a. A neat freak, and I, you know, used to work on the farm and smelled a lot of shit and all that stuff. But like, I don't want to do it while I'm laying on the couch. Yeah, my cat used to throw up sometimes, and I'd just scrub it out. I'd just 
I used this foam stuff that worked pretty good, but if it if it wasn't if it wasn't as much as it was, maybe I would. But like I'm telling you, it was all over the damn place. Like it, it was bad. Well, we'll all be, uh, you know, thoughts and prayers for Frank. Hopefully, he, no, no thoughts he and prayers better. to me. <laughs> Pray that he stops shitting and throwing up everywhere. He'll, he'll, he'll be fine. It's it's me. It's me. You should worry about. I'm barely hanging on by a thread. I can tell by the way you're talking. I'm hanging Maybe. by a moment here with you. Lifehouse. I remember that one. Maybe get yeah. some uh, some sleep. More like Death Pod. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well we'll we'll go ahead and get off of here and uh, and hopefully you can get some rest and and you'll be better for it tomorrow. Buy remember, some shirts. Buy remember, some shirts. Remember, tomorrow's a new day and the sun will shine tomorrow. And, and don't let anybody get over on you. That's that's what I'm worried about. You got to do all this shit again tomorrow. <laughs> Real quick, though, uh, any thoughts on the Vols getting to the fourth straight Super Regional? Were you watching this weekend? <clears throat> yeah, you know, I did watch some baseball over the weekend, and I was a little concerned yesterday when the pitcher kept fucking with his hat. And I thought, yeah. I th- well, he gave up a, a couple of runs there when he was messing with his hat. And I thought, well, this guy's going to cost us the game. Because he, he can't quit messing with that darn hat he's wearing. and then I, he... I did appreciate that he got a ball just absolutely rocketed off his, like, thigh slash knee. And as he's laying on the ground, they're just playing eight mile, lose yourself, like in the background, <laughs> the sad piano. Yeah. I was just sad they cut it off before the, the guitar started strumming so he could get up and, and get in the zone. Luckily, he recovered and, and finished it out pretty good. The other pitchers did good. And, I mean, the, the hitting, these boys just – they just hit the baseball. You know, they got some they got some real some real dogs hitting that baseball. And, GBO, uh, will, you, will you accept this as an important national championship if Tennessee wins it? Well, I mean, I'll watch it. No, I'm asking um, if you'll consider it an important national championship, like – to the haters and to the rivals that say we never win championships, will this one kind of quench that thirst for you? Yeah, to a to a point. I mean, I don't I don't know how to how to say where I'd stack it up though. Like it'll be it'll be cool, and I'll be proud I'm not of the asking boys. If, it's, if it means as much as an, a, a, a football one or a basketball, one. I'm not asking that. I'm just asking if you'll feel like you you saw your team win a national championship. It'll be cool, but I don't really know how it'll change my life in any way, you know? Well, I have a, I put a $200 free bet on the team in, like, February to win 4800 so it'd at least pay for my carpet cleaning. <laughs> yeah, nice. I, I hope it'd, so. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be nice to, you know, just uh, have that fall in my lap a little bit. So I, I hope I, a $4,600 profit will cover that carpet cleaning. $4,800 profit. It was a free bet. Oh, yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. yeah, you get your money back, too. Cool. Yeah. Well. Okay. Yeah. Well, see you later. All right. Have a good night.